Välkommen hit allihopa till den här förhållbaren om pengar. Ah, sorry. I just to talk in a British song. I'm German for that first. That's just about the English. Of course. This is in English. Strum. Thank you. Very much more. Bernard Lietel, 
friend of mine I've met. And um, it, it took, he, he was been on many, many occasions and uh, conferences. And no one told him what's the reason why he could be safe the whole planet. We start with a common myth we all live in. We think we live in a rational society, but we do have our myths. Things that declare how reality has to be, and that we never do question. For one central myth I found out is the myth of credit. Because money is making the world go round. And one of the central myths is that, that banks only are intermediaries. They lend out what other people lend them. Banks have a neutral system um, function in the society. And that's why they are not even mentioned or specially treated in uh, economics and the high schools. All our financial ministers and uh, the leading people, they don't care much about money and debt and banks. Because banks are just in between. They have no, um, they have no crucial impact on economy. It is said on a university in most many courses. And uh, there was a study by Professor Richard Werner in Frankfurt. He thought these guys should know people in Frankfurt a uh, little bit more and useful people. And 84% believed that money is created by the central bank or the government. And 90% were against that money is created by private companies. Well, that's exactly how it is. The awful truth is that when banks make loans, quotation, they create a deposit. It's exactly the other way around. And this is quite confusing. <laughs> this is a masterpiece of this solution. A masterpiece of uh, creating a fictitious reality. So, what happens if you go to the bank and bank questions, do you have enough earnings, um, um, do you... Well, that, that's not another point, uh, to make it more easy. If you go and you have a little shop, for example, you, um, over the course of the day you make quite a lot of trades, and at the end of the day, you have, say, 10,000 crowns in your, in your cash box. And this is 10,000 crowns in cash, with notes and banknotes and uh, coins. You go to the bank, make a deposit. But the banks run write down this, this amount of 10,000 crowns upon your, uh, uh, what is called, your account. Right? With this 10,000 crowns, you can make, uh, you can pay, your, let's say, to one who gives you, to send you all your stuff for your shop. And so this money, this, 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 this numbers on your accounts, is used as money. It's as good as money. But in reality, it's just a promise of the bank to pay you back your deposit. What I mean? It's just it's a it's a um, it's a debt of the bank to you. They promise if you come back you can get your ten thousand pounds back that you have deposited. It's a it's a it's a debt of the bank to you. Alright? It's very difficult so please try to focus here. Because it's a confusing it's it's essential that it's so if you make a loan and the banks ask you if you can pay back with interest and with securities and all this stuff, they create, they create two entries. On one side of their balance sheet, you have this amount to loan, let's say one million for your house. It's a demand 
from the bank to you. It's your debt to the bank. And then you ask, where is my money? I want to buy the house. Then the bank says, oh, it's on your account. And on this account, it appears as if you had one million cash in the hand and made a deposit. So you pretend to have had made a deposit. And with this deposit, it is used as money, as much as money. It is as good as money, and then it is <coughs> purchase power. This is our way, how we pay, because everyone who has a credit card knows this works very well. And mostly, we do not use more credit uh, cash to pay. 97% of all money is created by this way. It's a fictitious deposit. It's created out of nothing. Are there any questions yet? This is crucial to understand. For me, this was uh, very confusing at the first time. I just couldn't get it because it's, there's no loan. They monetize your debt. It's, uh, yeah? We're basically talking about fractional reserve banking. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, fractional reserve banking is just a tool to confuse you, or let's say, to give you the impression that there is been, that there's real money behind this. You know? Because in Sweden, there's no fractional reserve banking anymore. There's no reserve uh, demand either. But I, can, I would just would like to answer this because it's a, it's a very old system. It's uh, 300, 300, 400 years old. And it's based upon fraud, crucially. But it, anyway, it made possible that we could move from the idea that money should be gold. Because banks did have money in their walls and maybe people came with their gold. And when people wanted to and, and the people get a receipt for this gold. And these receipts, bank notes, became a way to pay. Because they were much more easier to pay with, with bank notes. But it was always uh, redeemable with gold. So banks found out, it is good enough, next time someone wants a loan, if I offer him bank notes. But there were ten times more bank notes around in circulation. They never go within the, in the uh, wall, their walls. That's why fractional reserve banking. There's only a fraction of the money in circulation that was uh, covered by, uh, by actual gold, which is meant to be real money. The rest was created money as debt. Follow me? But that was fraud because banks did have a demand on your securities. If the bank were in trouble, they could simply ask you to uh, pay back. And then you were forced to sell your house or anything. There was a real demand on you, even though they had created the money just as paper. And fractional reserve banking is essentially uh, a fraud. And some people deny today want to uh, return. Uh, uh, so today, we have this fractional reserve banking. It's, it's just a, a new form of fractional reserve banking. We have uh, 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 the bank notes are now created by the central banks, so it's only called notes. And the banks, um, the fractional reserve banking means that the banks create electronic money, which is the demand on these notes. You see? It's just, a, it's the same. It's the same pattern, just in another way. The other it was bank notes, which was a claim on gold, a fractional claim. It was a fractional fraud, actually, you can say. And today we have electronic money, which is a claim on paper money, but which also is it's not covered by 200 percent. You follow me? So, yeah. Yeah? yeah, I just wanted to say, as a side note, the, the concept is difficult to grasp when it's like explaining there are also several good videos on the internet which explain both the history and how the system works. Yeah. If you search for money as theft or something like this, there are also several from several different makers which <coughs> explain yeah. it in a few different viewpoints. So 
Yeah. Mike Maloney's Hidden Secret to Money is a really good video. Yeah. 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 There are a lot of good videos and uh, films now out there. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I just want to. Mm, my uh, thought of how I think people that are really uh, positive or accepting this system, how they might think, is that alone you create the, the money as uh, what you expect to produce in the future. Yeah. You, you, the money should uh, reflect the amount of value in society. That's, yes. That's a way of uh, to a good, good way of having a uh, monetary system is that you have the same amount of money as you have value in the total economy. Yeah. So and but if, if uh, when you take loan, it's like you you sign an agreement that I'm going to create value. I'm going to build this house, and it's going to be yeah. in the future. It's going to be worth as much as I'm taking loan for. So I guess that's the idea of this system. So yeah. So right. It's good to mention it. So it, it's it's not. I, I said it's a fraud. But in the same way, it has liberated us from the, the, the restricting <coughs> idea that money would be, uh, should be gold. So, uh, in this way, it, it's created mo money, in the, uh, it, it's a demand for the future. So we sell in a way our future to have money today. And why this has been quite uh, successful the last 300 years, to for, to building a growth in our society, growing economy. It is now in, we've coming come to a situation where we could can't have even more growth because <coughs> we are starting to to destroy our planet. Not possible. We need a system that is sustainable. It is going just we can't stay in a sustainable sustainable way. State uh, in a discord. State economy. And for Jeff for my bad English. <laughs> I try to do as good as I can. Um, so it's well we, but to come back to your to your point. Um, we have here an, in, an important problem. Because money is that. If state it is. Printed out nothing, but the interest rate is never in the system. If money is that, the interest rate in the future we have to pay back next year is never there. Got that? Because money is a, is a principle, one million, but the interest rate is never in the system. And if Almost all money, 97% is created by that way. Interest rate, the amount of interest rate pay, we have to pay to our banks is not in this whole money system. So we have to borrow next year even more to pay the interest rate. Which means, of course, in two years we have to pay even more. And so on. It's an exponential system. But since money, as you mentioned, it's a promise to make more value. We have to make more value next year, and even more in two years, and even even more in three years. It's an exponential growing uh, pressure on society to create more and more value, and to consume, of course. Because if you create value, you have to consume. That's why about a fourth of all our economic uh, uh, efforts are about to convince you to consume more. <laughs> Think about it. We about a fourth of all our. Uh, it's it's about advertising. To buy the rest three quarter. It's an enormous propaganda uh, machine working on us because we have to consume. Otherwise, growth would not be possible. And the system would collapse. And just think about how much this permeates all of our thinking, all of, all of our economy, and all of our society. It's really deep rooted. Yeah, I just want to know who and how did they make this calculation of one fourth of the economy, the global economy, 
I don't know. How, how can you see that it's one fold? I have read this marketing. I have read it somewhere. I have not checked it out. I've just read it somewhere. I think it was one of the eight it somewhere. It was, even if it's not one sales maybe it's 30, uh, 20 percent, I don't know. But pretty much we're working on advertisement and selling. It's, it's pretty much an economy. Many people are busy with that. I have a question about the bookkeeping. I, I'd imagine that when I learned money from my bank, they do some bookkeeping and have some offices. Yeah. Pay for the withdrawal of one million. But this will still apply when the bank looks in the central bank. Because the yeah. The other thing is that the central bank creates money out of nothing, or that the, the other commercial banks do. Yeah, this is there's that, quite a, a misunderstanding the relationship between central banks and the, uh, business banks. The money that the central banks create never ends up in the uh, normal circulation. This is not money that is created in a conventional way to buy stuff. The money that the central bank creates is just for the money that uh, is circulating between the banks and the banks and the central bank. And this kind of money is only used to uh, settle payments. Um, I have not went into this because it's quite difficult. But uh, I can short, try to explain shortly. Um, you know, uh, during the day, a lot of payments are done. And there were um, sent money from one bank to the other one. And you get someone and you get some payments back. And at the end of the day, they make a clean table and find out, all right, uh, we, count, we count or calculate all the money. And um, at the end of the day, we say, you owe, you owe me some money and uh, I owe you something. And this is, this payment at the end of the day between the banks has to be done in certain uh, uh, special kind of money for these reserves. And um, this is in, in Sweden, it's done by the plus Wix system. And um, this kind of, sometimes banks need this kind of Wix money. And then they go to the central bank and borrow it from there. And the central bank creates money out of nothing, nothing quite much in the same way, say, create, the banks create money out of nothing, and so it belongs to us. But this central bank reserves never are used in, uh, in the public. So um, sometimes we hear about in the news the central banks change um, uh, interest rate, the so, uh, so steel enter, the so, so steering interest rate. And we think now the banks will lower so their interest rates. But it's just only an indirect effect upon the banks. At the end, it had not much. The central banks doesn't have a lot of uh, power a lot, how much money is created. This is quite much a myth, even in academic circles. Uh, I have difficulty going to go into it. It's between it, uh, quite difficult. But let's go on here. How banks are creating money is officially confirmed by different people. I just mention it because maybe People think I'm a kind of a conspiracy guy. <laughs> uh, it, it's really so. Money is created out of nothing. Banks can lend simply by expanding the two sides of their balance sheet simultaneously, creating broad money. Broad money is the money we have in, the, in circulation, in the um, difference to the uh, reserves of the central bank. As I mentioned, central banks have no control. This kind of credit, what the Carter I we heard sometimes is a miss. When you you have seen as on the news always is a printing press, you see, running. Central banks are creating money. <coughs> it's rubbish. It's really illusion. Because central banks do not create uh, paper money when they lend money to the banks. It's the uh, same way it's electronic. Here's the amount of notes and points in 
comparison to the digital one. But as I mentioned, there's a need to be more and more indebted to pay the interest rate. The only way to get money is to get to make a loan. So if the system is in trouble, we need ourselves to make loans. And sometimes, I know from history, if there has been a problem in the economy, they started a war. Because the war is the best way. Pay more money because the country needs to make loans to pay the, to make the law. <coughs> the war. So if you have an economic crisis, it has not been so so long. We started the war. Or the war saved the economy, let's say so. Um, we have a forced economic growth, as I told you already. And of course, this is ecologically unsustainable. We cannot have uh, exponential growth. I'm just going to what exponential growth means. It means we have to double our economy in 24 years if we have a growth of 3%. 3%. In 24 years, doubling our economy. It means you don't have to have two cars or two refrigerators and travel three times around the world, everyone, just to feel feel to make the system work. And that's why we have a total crisis if we have zero growth. The politicians are going nuts. We have zero growth, it's a catastrophe. Or even a recession, 1% degrowth. It's terrible, really. They are going nuts, the economy is in crisis. Why? Because then the system will collapse soon. They are in fear. Of course, this creates a very unstable economy. Because you end up sooner or later in a situation where you can't get more debt for the people. You can uh, make a lot of uh, downsizing in the social system. Take away all the benefits. Push all the money over to the financial market. But eventually, sooner or later, this whole system has to collapse. We are a bit about exponential indebtedness, what it means. Simple interest, exponential interest. This is dramatic, and now this is reality. Pretty convincing. This is in America, national debt, and this is in Sweden. See, this is what the central bank is creating. Not very much. And this is what the banks are creating in debt or in money. I've already mentioned this. Well, this, just try to, uh, to imagine a bit what does this make the system with our society. We need to have growth. We are so much um, convinced that we have to work harder and harder and harder. And uh, there's uh, always a sense of, of uh, scarcity in society. It's not enough. Even we have abundance. It's too much of money stuff. We don't actually need it. But there's always a sense of uh, something's missing. There's a scar sense of scarcity in society. Because there's always, always not enough money. There's always fear. Feel that? And uh, um, this is. You can say, of course, it's psychologically, but I found out there's a pretty good chance that it's based upon how our system is created. We have to monetize the world without any respect for the limits of the planet. This is crucial for you to understand. We have no chance to create a sustainable future if you do not change the money system, because it is permeating everything. Money is, is uh, controlling everything, what you do. <coughs> Think about it. Nothing here is, would be here without money. It is permeating all our thinking and all our economy and politics. But we never question how it is created and what and, what, and uh, uh, yeah, the features of the money system. 
to vary going to energy. And um, that's why we're so compelled to, to destroy ourselves. <laughs> mad way. It's really mad actually. But it's very difficult to, to get a grip on it. So this, that's what I mostly have an intention here to do. You can grip on it. But to, you see, there is a possibility to change it. But we have to change what is this thing first. Otherwise, we, we, we are compelled, compelled in a mad way to continue, even though everyone says this the wrong way. We, we feel we destroy our future of our kids. But it go on. I mean, uh, Dennis Meadows knew it already 40 years ago. Nothing has happened. On the contrary, we have continued. This system is extremely uh, beneficial for the top 1%. Imagine 0.6% uh, of world population owns almost 40%. And, and then you see here 8%, about 8.1%, owns over 80%. Eight percent is owned by eight percent of the world population, and the poor seventy percent owns about three point three percent of all wealth. This is extremely concentration of wealth, very few hands, and it's even worse because they actually control over the big systems of the big uh, transnational companies. It's in the hands of about three hundred people. So, uh, Swiss uh, University who made it, study about it. And this, of course, leads to a democratic crisis. We have what Angela Merkel called a market conform democracy. This is very <laughs> nice <laughs> put. It's actually democracy, it's not soon not worth the name. And you can Think a bit about it. Why do they want to have surveillance everywhere? Why do they need control of everyone? This city of saying. Maybe you shouldn't question. Banks have the power. Because if you own debt, you have control of everything. Because you want money back, so they create it out of nothing. You have to claim on it. On everyone. Even the, 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 uh, democracy or our government. They can create money out of nothing and in that view, then you have to serve me. Think about it. It's an enormous power. And I can uh, I can pay everyone who's opposing me. This is an old story. Control of the money system has been a very, very long, gone very long back. And uh, I recommend the book of uh, Daniel David Graeber, in depth in the last 5,000 years. Because this is nothing new. That is what keeps us together. And to get that is that what is a uh, glue in society. Yeah? Just a quick comment if I understand correctly in the Euro system that governments there is a rule that they have to borrow from the private market, they cannot borrow from their own central bank. That's no, they cannot. Yeah. So I'm mean, connecting to this about the power of the person who gives the loan. Yeah, so the, the government has to borrow so from the banks, yeah. which create without the nothing. So government is indebted to the banks. Is in the US the government can borrow from the central bank. Why? Because the central bank is privately owned. Yeah, that is it okay? <laughs> I mean, it's also problematic when you hear today that we cannot afford uh, healthcare and so on. Of course, I mean, if you had be able to borrow from your central bank at some fixed rate or something, it would be much more easier to do such things. Yeah, of course. It's a, why? I mean, would you call it a democracy if, um, if the military was in the hands of a few private companies or the police? Or the courts, which you say, oh, it's okay. 
No, of course you will question all this stuff, really, democracy, actually. But it's quite self-evident, it's okay, that the manipulation is in the hand of you, which is much more powerful, too, than the control of the military. <laughs> because if you have money, you can pay everything, everybody. You do not even question this. You will never find it in the, in the newspapers. So, to end up, um, there have been several uh, proposals how to take away the banks to create money. And, and the last system crisis was in the 30s. And um, it is uh, about, it was about 73% of former economic professors supported the idea. Uh, it is called 100% money. Uh, so the banks had to have 100% uh, money from the central bank in order to make a loan, give a loan. Today this would be quite difficult uh, because in that, in that these days, I say uh, electronic money has not been so used at all. <laughs> so uh, that's why there are more modern, modern proposals and uh, they are called sovereign money or positive money. These are much easier proposals. They simply give up the idea that you have to have any uh, reserves, not 100% reserves, but simply says one kind of money which is created by a democratic uh, uh, transparent authority. Could be the central bank or something else. But it's important to have the same status like the court. It has to be independent from um, economic interests or even from political interests. Because money has to be according to the amount of value which is created in society. It's as simple as that. If you have too much, that's inflation, too less, it's deflation. But it has to be created in a transparent, democratic way. And then we can use it in the way we want it to, use, to be used. Which means we, can, we must have uh, the power to create a sustainable economy. That's the first crucial step for a sustainable uh, society. And we will never be able to deal with our future problems without having taken control of the money system. So this is a, an old idea, and uh, it has been uh, interesting enough. Um, now I met a study from a guy called um, Michael Bennis and Kumhoff. The study is called the Chicago, Chicago Plan of Institute. If you're a bit interested, please Google. It's quite clear. And um, well, these were the claims. It was a very uh, advanced uh, simulation. Complete el el elimination of bank runs. Well, no more possible banks will go collapse because of bank run. Dramatic reduction of public debt, simply because money is no longer created as a debt, and dramatic production of private debt, because same reason, and in the way of transition from the old system to the new, to the new system, there would be a great opportunity to reduce the debt, quite, quite dramatically in the, in the beginning, because the bank's money has to be converted into the central banks or the democratic money. So the banks will owe, will, have, uh, will have to pay by debt to the central bank or to the new authority. Because in the course of some years, they have to pay back the money they created out of nothing. And uh, this will reduce the level of debt dramatically. Um, so well, this would make it possible to have a uh, uh, steady state economy. 
There will still be growth if necessary, but it's much easier to to um, steer the economy you know, to a steady state economy. And as I said, even if the debt grows, there's a debt level is sinking in society. It's even possible to have more growth there because you can invest more. But in certain societies, this would be good. Or in our society, of course, there could be growth. So you can uh, invest more, but then you can say, okay, we have to control where the money is going for sustainable projects, um, green energy and so on. But the, the necessity to grow is taken away from us. See? Here are some links. I want to get more information. Now we have some minutes to questions, if you have, if anyone. Is it, is it, did you get it? Is it, you look a bit, uh, <laughs> was it too much, was it difficult? Uh, yeah? Uh, how does this relate to Bitcoin? I'm not sure about Bitcoin. Uh, maybe it's a good idea. Uh, maybe. You couldn't do fractional reserve with Bitcoin because Bitcoin has a fixed number and you can't create new ones. That's one of the yeah. benefits of Bitcoin is that you don't have this kind of shit going on. No, yeah, that's, that's true. So uh, the question is... Um, if you, you could uh, have a bank issuing the same kind of money, different money we have today, based on Bitcoin, you go there with your Bitcoins uh, and you mean like backed by Bitcoin, you get, you get backed by gold. And they lend out $1,000. You could, you could do that, I guess. But you know, Bitcoin, because it is so split bit, uh, so there's a danger in it too, because sometimes uh, society needs money, and uh, uh, that, that makes, because it's, Bitcoin is very volatile, worse, it has grown and worse enormously and then it back down. And if you build a society on such a volatile economy, it is, it is dangerous. You need more stability. Okay. Yeah, so, so you, you need, actually, I do like more the idea that you have a transfer uh, authority that creates uh, money according to the demand, of the need of the society. And it's not uh, on an abstract um, system or an abstract uh, how it is created. You, you can uh, uh, influence how much bitcoins are created and this is a wonderful thing in it. But that is, makes it also very uh, stiff. You know? this, is a, this is not good for economy because the wood has the same like, features. It's very stiff how much. And this has been catastrophic sometimes uh, historically. This has been a, few, a huge um, um, advantage for us to get free of gold. This was not good. It's those who dream about going back to gold back uh, currencies uh, say, you know, not history. <laughs> Just a continuation to that. I mean, if the government wants to um, build some important infrastructure in the country and they just have 10 bitcoins, they cannot do it. <laughs> no, they can't do it. So this is restriction, which is uh, not um, suitable for us. It doesn't help us. Yeah. It seems to me like you want to exchange the current system with a new sort of authoritative system where, where there's a new monetary authority uh, issuing the money. But I think what we really need is this competition, all kinds, lots of thousand different kinds of money bloom and see how the market plays out and see what works. Yeah, yeah you certainly want to see Austria there. Yes, yes I guess. indeed. <laughs> Yes, and just remember Milton Friedman was for this, for this system. His point was that uh, money is not a part of the uh, market system. This is an uh, illusion or uh, delusion idea because, you know, uh, if you 
think about a football game. You have a competition there between the different the crews and so on. Yeah? But one crew can uh, decide how many balls are on the ground, uh, who gets the ball, and uh, who can face uh, uh, You know, the state or the government has to be the one who creates the frame of the market system. And this is a central misunderstanding of all uh, libertarian thinkers that the market is free and the government or the state is, 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 a, is a problem. Historically, it's been quite the opposite. First, there have been a stable uh, government and a state, and these states created them mark free markets to pay their, their armies, if you take it back, for example. So, uh, the idea of a free market for, for, for currencies. Um, um, who is controlling how much money is created? Who is, if they were fraudulent, created out of nothing? Who is looking for your fortune which disappeared? And, all this. and we did have the system. Think about it. Banknotes have been created out of nothing for hundreds of years. And why we have now central banks? Because it is because these banks have created so much volatility and, and destabilized the society. That's why we came up historically to the idea, okay, we cannot let banks create bank notes, we must have a central bank. And uh, uh, that, that's why, you know, um, you will have certainly good answer, I guess. <laughs> well, if I may, um, you, if Bitcoin were to become a competitor to your system, you would be inclined to forbid Bitcoin then? No, I don't think so. This is not a problem. Because uh, uh, Bitcoin is not, the, not really competitive here. No. I, I can't see it. I can't see it. This is. But um, I, I, I've been. Uh, I demanded to, to, to round up. <laughs> we can talk about it a little bit more later. Uh, is there more crucial question? I'm not sure that um, changing the, the way money is created would help us in any way because a lot of companies are profit oriented. Companies for sure. So they are measured the profit they make in a year, and they have to make more profit next year. They yeah. can't get away from this make more profit thinking. So the shareholders, for example, want to make more money from the, yeah. from the company. So they want. Why? Why do you think changing the way money is created to change that thinking or that way of thinking of getting more money? Yeah. Thank you. Very good point. Absolutely. I do agree. Um, you have to read uh, Hans Christian Dinswanger, a uh, um, 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 Swiss professor who just pointed out this point. But he is for this money, so this change of money system, he has uh, actually engaged quite much in a, to uh, make uh, this change. But we, this is not good enough, as you mentioned. We have to create even new forms of companies which have less uh, demand for. For, for growth because so in sort of winning. So his idea is we have to change the kind of uh, speed what it's called uh, the different kinds of com forms of company yeah. which have which will take away the the, the forced growth to, uh, for, for winning. This is a good one. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.